Here we are doing another one of our Tea Party Guide to Washington tapes. This is in Calorama. And we're actually today not going to spend so much time looking at Calorama, but instead spend more time uh, going down Massachusetts Avenue on Embassy Row, which we're only about a block and a half from. But we're starting out here. We're not giving out the address on Chris Wallace's block. Chris Wallace, the son of the famed journalist Mike Wallace, and this is Chris Wallace's house. Uh, at least I think that was his house. It's one of these two. You'll have to, if you really need to know, you'll have to look it up yourself, because I'm not telling you. But it, it was one of those two houses. I'd written the address down earlier. <laughs> I've now forgotten it. <laughs> it would be funny if Chris Wallace was standing in the window in his underwear, but unlikely to happen, I suppose. <clears throat> At any rate, these houses are mainly owned by people like David Brock and Anthony Podesta and Chris Wallace and members of the Kennedy family. But as soon as we get a few blocks away, actually, I think it's this one on the corner that's Chris Wallace's. I've taped it before and I remember it better from the back because of its, had some construction, had a certain kind of uh, construction dumpster park behind it. But we're not going that way today. We're going out onto Massachusetts Avenue. We're going to walk up Embassy Row, Massachusetts Avenue, to um, Hillary Clinton's house, which is right behind the Naval Observatory, where the, where, uh, the Vice President lives for free in public housing on the Naval Observatory. And what's amusing about that is that that means that currently Hillary Clinton and uh, Joe Biden <laughs> have a property line where their backyards touch. The spire you see behind the trees, if you can, in the distance is the Islamic Center. The Islamic Center is in one of my other videos. Some years you can buy a ticket to Tour Embassy Row from the Officers' Wives Club, uh, and there'll be a dozen embassies or so on the tour. And, uh, Sometimes the Islamic Center is in it. Here is the Embassy of Guyana. Mixed in with the four million dollar houses and the fancier embassies are also embassies from smaller countries. Almost all their buildings, no matter how small, are worth about two million dollars in this neighborhood. The really large ones are worth closer to 20 ones that are more like office buildings. And if they chose to sell, sell, uh, sell them, they could probably do all kinds of great things for poverty-stricken people in their country, or even just for taxpayers. And they could still buy even more space in another less expensive part of D.C. <clears throat> Here's the uh, Islamic Center. For those of you who are libertarians and go to libertarian events, you can ask Tom Palmer for his amusing story about the construction of this. He lived in Washington at the time. Uh, maybe you can even see that this back part is tilted at an angle to the front part. That's not a right angle there in the corner where it juts out. And that's because this part has to face Mecca, so that when people are facing the prayer wall in the back, they're facing Mecca. But DC had a law that in the front has to be parallel to the street. So for the Muslims to build their building there was a fight for apparently months or years with many lawyers and zoning boards and eventually the way they worked it out is they built this odd building where one piece of the building is parallel to all the streets but the back part that has the prayer wall is at an angle because it's facing Mecca. Uh, apparently a Catholic university <laughs> currently cannot be afforded that same uh, same grace. Um, <laughs> If they want to offer insurance that doesn't cover everything and say if you need it to cover more, you are free to go buy insurance elsewhere, they don't get that religious liberty. But these people get to build a building that is not a perfect square, which apparently was also against the line you see, and instead can build a building that faces the street on various sides and is otherwise in a regular shape and has a back wall that faces Mecca. 
There are always lots of taxi cab drivers here, because in DC all the taxi cab drivers are from Eritrea, and Somalia, and Ethiopia, and other countries that frankly are, are oppressed by Muslims, but frequently oppressed by Muslim countries from farther away. <clears throat> but they come here and pray for better fares. Uh, This is a small bridge over Wat Rock Creek Park. And the other side is still Embassy Row and still Calorama. It's April 3rd. There's an election in D.C. today. And one of the other tapes of a lot of Ron Paul signs. These people, Terry Gavis and Bob Cavill, are running for uh, National Committee, Man, Committee Woman of the Republican National Committee. So if you're a Republican, you can vote for who's going to be serving D.C. on the National Committee, the Republican National Committee. Anyway, this is Rock Creek Park below us. Uh, the purpose of this tape is actually that it was too pretty to stay indoors. And uh, simply going for a walk and listening to the radio or riding a bike seemed too simple. I'm making an iPad video my Taxpayer's Guide to DC series. Oh, there's a June bug. Or is it a bumblebee? It's a bumblebee. Almost worth filming on its own. This is the actual Rock Creek below us of Rock Creek Park. So there's a creek that has parkland along either side and then has a four-lane expressway. I once took some people from the Orlando Winter Haven area of Florida from Falls Church, Virginia to Upper Northwest D.C. to a Rush Orthodox Church in Crestwood and I just drove them through this and the whole time they were looking at each other like their driver was crazy because I was taking them through the woods. They didn't see D.C. and they didn't see any buildings. They didn't see any people who looked like people they were expecting to see in D.C. They were just kind of shocked that we went into the woods before we seemed to get into D.C. and we came out of the woods near the Rush Orthodox Church. And uh, they wondered where all the public housing and skyscrapers and businesses and other things were. They weren't there. Because <laughs> Rock Creek Park goes all the way through the city. It used to essentially be the line of racial segregation. It divided the white part of D.C. from the black part under FDR and Lyndon Baines Johnson and Nixon. But the city has become more integrated, especially under Clinton and Bush, mainly because the rapid expansion of the federal government meant that the city imported huge numbers of people of all races, but definitely wider and or more Asian than the people who lived in D.C. before. Imported all these economists and technocrats and lawyers who all had graduate degrees and were less likely to be African American than the people who already lived here. The result is those people have bought up neighborhoods that used to be African American farms and had been since the 60s. There are lots of neighborhoods in D.C., by the way, that are African American that have never been slums and have always been full of lawyers and doctors and hoity toity people. But the new white and or non-black and or every race yuppies who moved here with their six-figure federal salaries working for lobbyists in federal government tended to buy old slummy buildings and old slummy neighborhoods and convert them to condos so that if you just took a snapshot it looked like DC was getting more integrated although what's actually happening is, is that high income graduate school educated singles and two income couples with no kids have been moving in and displacing the poor mainly black people uh, who, in some cases, if they owned their house, could sell it and move back to the Carolinas and retire. And if they were living with Grandma and didn't own the house, they might have to move far out in Prince George's County and rent something cheap and commute a long way to their job. And, of course, I'm sure there are worse possibilities, too, of what would happen to one. But um, that's what happens. So there are all these neighborhoods that are kind of in flux as the yuppies move in and the 
working class and unemployed entrepreneur from Quebec. 